Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today I am here to put some makeup on and just talk openly. I had a few things that I wanted to discuss, so if you are interested, please keep watching. Hey guys, so I'm going to use some of this CeraVe moisturizing cream, CeraVe, CeraVe, under my eyes. It's actually for anywhere, but I like it for under my eyes. I take just a little bit. It doesn't have like fragrance or anything like that. And it's nice and emollient for under my concealer later on. So I'm super excited about this. I went to my Sephora this morning and got the new Laneige Gummy Bear Sleeping Mask and I also got the Lip Glowy Balm. So I'm going to use the Lip Glowy Balm at the end of the video, but I wanted to try this. I haven't even opened it yet. And you know, it always comes with this little doodad, the little spatula. I don't ever use that, but just for just for funsies. So it comes with a little seal. Let's just try it with the little spatula. This is so extra. Ooh. Oh my God. It smells so good. This is probably the most fragrant lip sleeping mask of all the ones that I've tried. And I've tried all of them, literally. So it's got like a purplish tint to it, but it's obviously pretty sheer once you actually blend it out. I'm going to go ahead and say this is the most flavorful uh, Laneige lip sleeping mask that I have tried aside from the mint Chaco one. And that's only because mint is such a strong scent flavor anyway. Um, so Usually anything mint is going to be very fragrant, but this I really like. Mm, it's so sweet. I don't even really get like gummy bear vibes. I get just like the sweetest like lollipop, not even a flavored lollipop. Just think like extreme like sugar candy. And it's funny because I own the... Um, sweet candy lip mask too and that one's good but that's like this is like three times that as far as like that sugary smell that you get mm, yum so good I want to eat it at first I thought that it was going to be online only but then I went on Sephora this morning and did the locate in store just to double check and all of the Sephora's around me said that they had it in stock. So I called because I didn't want to waste a trip to the mall. And she was like, yeah, we have it in the back. So there you go. So you guys will probably have no issue finding it if you're interested in it. I'm using the Milani eyeshadow primer. And starting in this video, I am going to be listing the products that I use in the description box because I have more people watching my videos now and a couple of you made the suggestion in my last video. Um, you, A lot of you were asking like, okay, what eyeliner we're using, what mascara, what foundation. Um, and then a couple of people also said, you know, can you just start listing the products? And the reason that I had not been listing the products in the more recent videos is because when I'm talking about something, I want it to be more or less focused on the conversation versus telling you guys, oh, this is the best highlighter, this is the best bronzer, go buy this, go buy that. I wanted it to be just a conversation versus sort of a commercial for all the products that I'm using. So I hope that makes sense. But since you guys think that it's helpful, I will be more than happy to start listing them in this video and going forward again. I used to in my old videos, but I will start back up. Okay, for eyeshadow, I'm using the Urban Decay Moon Dust Eyeshadow in Powder Trip. Looks like this. This is more bright than Midnight Blast. I talk about Midnight Blast a lot too. I'll show you guys side by side. 
So Midnight Blast is over here, and then Powder Trip is over here. Powder Trip is more of a bright copper, and I would say um, Midnight Blast is more of a coppery, deeper rose gold instead of having those like bright amber copper sort of vibes. I love the moon dust shadows though. They are so beautiful. And it is best if you apply these with your finger just so that there is not as much fallout. So apply onto a good eyeshadow primer or a cream eyeshadow and then do the blending with the brushes. Don't try to do the application with the brushes or they are super underwhelming. I'll just be really honest. And you know, honestly, this would look even better if I had used it with the NYX glitter primer because the glitter primer stays tacky stays tackier than the Milani eyeshadow primer. So I want to talk to you guys about this whole James Charles and Manny MUA thing that they've been going off about Alicia Keys coming out with her own beauty brand. Evidently they went on a little Twitter rant. I've said in other videos, I'll say it again, I don't have Twitter. Uh, but obviously I hear about things because of YouTube and social media in general. So I want to look up, I really haven't even looked at it for myself, so I want to see what is she doing first of all, because at first it sounded like it was maybe a makeup brand or that's what they thought it was, and then it came out that it's not even a makeup brand. But this is on the WWD website and it says, Alicia Keys partners with e.l.f. for a new beauty brand. So I think when people see that headline, you know, Alicia Keys over the past few years has been someone very vocal about not wearing makeup. She's been doing no makeup, only skincare, and speaking out about how not wearing makeup makes her feel great and all of that. And that's great. You know, what, whatever your journey is. Oh, God damn it. I hate when websites do that. To continue reading this article, please subscribe. Okay, we're going to go to a different website. Um, but yeah, when people see that headline, I think that it caused a lot of confusion. And I am not standing up for Manny or James because I don't agree with what they did. But if you know Alicia Keys and you know that she's been on this no makeup uh, train for a few years and then you hear that she's coming out with a beauty brand people jump to conclusions think that it's a makeup brand and it's actually not you know that can cause uh, some confusion because it's like okay well you're not even wearing makeup you're saying how you don't want anything to do with makeup why are you coming out with a beauty brand but let's read a little bit about it she's 39 I guess I thought she was a little younger. So I am on the People website. People is not, you know, CNN, but let's see what they have to say. They are saying that she is working with ELF to create a new ground groundbreaking lifestyle beauty brand. According to a press release, the brand will aim to bring new meaning to beauty by honoring ritual in our daily life and practicing intention in every action. So in 2016, this is the tweet that kind of started it all. She said, y'all me choosing to be makeup free doesn't mean I'm anti-makeup, do you? So all of it started sort of in 2016. And I remember around that time is when I heard about it. So it doesn't say that it's not makeup but it also doesn't say that it is makeup it sort of sounds like it could be either is it going to be wellness products is it going to be some sort of supplement you know elf already has a lot of actual makeup and they've also done collabs with beauty gurus and bloggers and things like that so i don't really know if this would if it was just a collab for a little makeup I don't think that it would be you know as mysterious as this is I guess so else 
chairman and CEO said she's been wanting to do something in lifestyle and wellness for quite some time. So the tweet that James put out said, people who do not wear makeup should not be coming out with makeup brands, but that's just my opinion. And then he backpedaled and he said, it's childish to indirect tweet someone and I am not the gatekeeper of makeup. I was bothered because many celebrities come into the beauty space as a cash grab without any passion and then leave. And then he said he can't wait to support her products. So you are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. So Manny MUA kind of took the same seat as James did and, you know, put it out on Twitter very quickly. People are very quick to put tweets out. And I think that's one thing that's been very, very obvious during my time of kind of looking at beauty guru stuff and just, you know, people in general, instead of, instead of gathering the data and coming up with an opinion that you can stand behind, they're just going to put out a tweet and then apologize or delete it when it backfires. I'm just like, why not just hold your horses? Let's see what's going on before everyone, you know, goes on a Twitter rant. And one of you guys did tell me, by the way, I'm using the Rimmel Scandalize in brown. This is a drugstore, such a good eyeliner. One of you guys did tell me that Katie Joy went on her channel and was ranting about, you know, she was talking about this and then she started ranting about how, um, you know, women need to not be wearing glitter because they look like five-year-olds and nobody is going to hire you if you wear glitter and bright, you know, makeup all over your face. Like, first of all, let me say something about that. If you wanna wear glitter and bright eyeshadow, there are CEOs, there are people that have very, um, very reputable jobs working in offices who have bright pink hair and wear whatever the hell they want to wear. So to assume that a company is not going to want to hire someone, like that's just comical to me. Like, let's just be real. I think that people need to do a better job of, and I'm more or less talking about her. Stop assuming that just because you and the people in your town that you see and the people that you talk to, just because they're only wanting to wear beige eyeshadow, why are you assuming that glitter is associated with a five-year-old? I wear pressed glitter all of the time and I have a pretty good job. So I don't know what kind of point you were trying to make with that, but I think that it fell short. So, you know, th this is ridiculous. And as far as the um, thing about, oh, why can't any, why can't they be happy for Alicia Keys? What has Alicia Keys ever done to anyone? I like Alicia Keys. She has not been perfect. Um, but as far as her coming out with something, if it was makeup targeted to women who are in their late 30s or early 40s, we already have that. So it's not like the market necessarily needs it. She's not filling a void. Okay, I'm using this infallible Pro Last from L'Oreal in Forest Green. Do a little color eyeliner. But one thing I will say that I thought was very interesting was that, you know, James and Manny both were very quick to jump on Twitter and jump all over Alicia Keys. Where was that energy when the D'Amelio sisters came out with the collab with Morphe? Is it because they're both so aligned with Morphe? They, you know, wouldn't dare say anything. Is it because, you know, James has all these TikTokers on his YouTube channel all the time? 
I mean, I didn't see either of those girls wearing a ton of makeup in their TikTok videos. And I know they were young and that's to be noted as well. But at the end of the day, the biggest takeaway is that Jim Charles and Manny MUA are no gatekeeper for who can come out with makeup. Because if you want to look at it that way, a musician could also look at James Charles and say, why are you trying to come into the music industry when you can't sing? So I, I do agree with the point of someone who doesn't use makeup. It's not a good idea probably to come out and all of a sudden push a makeup line. But I really don't think that that's what Alicia Keys is doing. I have a feeling that this might be some sort of branch off brand that has affordable skincare. I could see them maybe doing some supplements or like bath and body kind of stuff. We don't know. So James and Manny need to have a seat, please. And stop. I just wish people would stop going on Twitter so quickly. Like, just shut up. Just, just have a seat, sit down. Like, let's get the information together. If you still have a statement that you want to say, then say it, but don't backpedal, you know, don't, it's too much of this tweet and delete and I'm going to go on a Twitter rant and then apologize or try to get rid of the evidence. Like, oh, it's so tiring. Like, shut up. Do not ever allow people to tell you because you're however old you're not supposed to be wearing glitter or you're not supposed to have bright color hair or you're not supposed to wear neon eyeshadow or you're not going to get a job or you're you're gonna look like a teenager like who cares you want to wear that and you think it looks good if you like it I love it and the whole thing is the one, I would say the only thing that I would encourage people, say 40 plus, to shy away from doing as far as makeup application would be baking under the eyes and wearing like full coverage matte foundations. That I can attest to that it's not the best look. But again, if you like it, I love it. Go for it. Um, but I think even if you do have a really good skincare regimen and your skin is moisturized and all of that, I do think that it's still hard to avoid baking and it looking very parched and crepey and just taking all of the suppleness out of your skin. So that would be the only thing that I would shy away from. But I also think part of it might be, I think about how people look at modesty in makeup and fashion and everything combined. I think some of it might also have to do with where you were raised and where you live and what you're used to seeing because I have noticed from my own personal experience that basically, I, I don't want to put too much out there, but let's just say the Midwest in like Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, I have seen that area of the country look at things that I would do in the Mid-Atlantic East Coast, like the DC to New York area, look at things that are very normal here and think that it is like too progressive or too outside of the box and it just really makes me laugh big time because these are things that i wouldn't even think twice about you know judging 
I look at like tattoos in the workplace. That's a good kind of general idea. And around here where I live and where I'm from, there are many companies that couldn't care less if you have tattoos. Most companies care about your experience, your character, your um, education. They care about the things that actually are going to tell them how are you going to perform as an employee for their company. But there are other companies that will sit there and literally ignore that and say, okay, well, you can't have a visible tattoo and ignore all of your qualifications, which is crazy to me. I'm using my Mac face and body in C5. I use this 90% of the time. So if y'all go to old videos and you see me putting makeup on and I don't list it, I could almost guarantee that it's the Mac face and body. If y'all have dogs, do they ever just act weird for no reason and it like freaks you out? I'm not even kidding. Like Axel's sitting right over here and then he disappeared. So I was like, okay, well, let me check on him, see what he was doing. I figured he was just sleeping. He was literally sitting at our front door, which he never does. And he was just looking at the door. I opened the door and make sure, you know, I'm like maybe UPS dropped something off. And I didn't hear it. He usually barks, but you never know. Sometimes I'll just drop it and leave. Nothing's at the door. So I call him back here so he can sit in the room or lay on the bed or whatever. And then he was just sitting there and started growling. But it was like one of those real like muffled growls. Almost like under his breath. I'm like, do I have a ghost in my house? Like, what is going on? I do believe that dogs can sense things that we can't. And I do believe that they will sense things far before we will. It is so fascinating. I mean, dogs are just so intelligent. I hate it when people try to downplay like how smart dogs are. Are you kidding me? Okay, and then to set under my eyes, I always, always, always use the ambient lighting powder from Hourglass in diffused light. It looks like this. There are two that are very pale. I use the one that is a little more yellow. There's also one that's a little more white, just like a pearl. I have had both, but I prefer diffuse light because the lighter one, it does a little too much brightening under my eyes. And it can look borderline unnatural if I go with a little bit too much of a heavy hand. So diffuse light is the way to go for me. Okay, I really want to have something a little different on my lower lash line. So I'm going to use Urban Decay Zodiac. And it is like this sparkly green. This is a moon dust eyeshadow too. So I don't know if it's going to do what I want it to do. Oh, and the other thing that I want to talk about today, I've got two more things I want to talk about. So one, I want to talk about the Benadryl challenge that is going around on TikTok right now. You heard me right, the Benadryl challenge. So obviously I've not partaken in this challenge, but evidently teenagers are taking too much Benadryl. I don't know how many of the tablets they're taking, but they basically take it and document their experience. I don't understand why TikTok is such a cesspool of ignorant. I've talked 
a little bit about TikTok on my channel before, but it is baffling to me how now the dancing and stuff is, is it cringy? Yes. But that is nothing that I couldn't care less about. My problems with TikTok come with the really problematic behavior like the Benadryl challenge or the nutmeg challenge where kids were taking a bunch of nutmeg because it would supposedly make you hallucinate. Like these kinds of things is where I have a big problem. Okay, so that moon dust eyeshadow on my lower lash line wasn't bad, but I did have to build it up. And I feel like some of the sparkles like got away from me. So that's kind of annoying, but it's not bad. But the really crazy part is that these kids are doing this Benadryl challenge. And the problem is, is that, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I am doing everything in my power to avoid going to the hospital right now because of the big the big uh thing that's going around you guys know what i'm talking about so to take that and then have to go to the hospital is the worst like what the hell i mean i don't know i'm one of those people who i couldn't care less if tiktok gets banned i know that a lot of people really like that app but it has done more harm than good. And I think now with Instagram having reels, it will allow people to create content, but not the really cringy stuff that was uh, going around on TikTok because Instagram's guidelines are completely different than what you know TikTok was doing. I feel like they have a better eye on what's going on. Okay, so, oh, I'm using the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in Bronze 04. Okay, to highlight, I'm using Hourglass Iridescent Strobe Light, but first, I'm going to use some of my Wen Toner Mist. This is almost gone. Luckily, I have another bottle. I don't know why that stuff smells like all of the Orbe hair products. It smells so good, but it just feels weird. It feels weird spraying it on my face because I always associate that smell with my hair. So it's a little weird. This is literally like all dressed up and nowhere to go, but who cares? Oh, the last thing I'm going to talk about in this video is and I'm sure if you guys watch the XB's boy, you'll know already, but evidently Miss uh, Cruella is threatening to sue him. You guys, I, I don't even know. I'm just gonna start calling her Karen on my channel. That way I don't have to use her name. Y'all will know what I'm talking about. So if I say Karen, that's who I'm talking about. So Karen is threatening to sue. I've never seen someone in my life so sue happy. Just like consistently trying to sue people. Okay, let's try a little bit of this Laneige Lip Glowy Balm in Gummy Bear. I should have taken the foundation off of my lips. That would have been nice. Try it again. That is so yum. The whole thing is, it's just the irony in it all. Could you imagine talking about other people for a living, making money off of it, and then trying to say that someone recorded you illegally, even though you consented? and said that it was fine. Like the irony in that is just out of this world. You know, commentating and having a YouTube channel with subscribers, 
becomes the territory of people talking about you and people making critiques. And that's exactly what I said in my first video is just that people are going to talk about you. Get over it. You know, people are going to not like what you're doing. I've had people in my comments, it's obviously supporters of Karen, but people critiquing my makeup and saying that the video is stupid because I'm doing my makeup or, you know, saying that I'm a, saying that I'm a bad person because I'm talking about her. Like, it's okay. With views and attention comes comments that either might make no sense, they might make a little sense, and maybe you're in denial. You know, unless people are just being outright rude, then I don't see what there is to get so upset over. Okay, to put a little something extra on my lips, I'm going to use the Tower 28 Shine On Lip Jelly in Magic. It looks like this. This is just a clear gloss that has gold shimmer in it. So pretty. So anyway, yeah, this is gonna be the finished look. I always like kind of push my lashes up a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, this is gonna be the finished look. I hope that you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please leave me a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Oh, and I also wanted to add before I sign off, these highly recommend. I would go for the lip sleeping mask if you like something that's more in a jar and a little thicker and emollient. But if you like something that is a little bit more of a slip, a little bit um, more of a glossy balm sort of vibe, then go with this one. But I like both of them equally. I will get fair use out of both of them. So now I'm going to film a video ranking all of the ones that I own, the lip glowy balms and the lip masks. So I'm going to do that. But anyway, I will see you guys later.